what's the definition of power series, how we define them, how to add them together, and taking the derivative of them. Let us begin by a definition. A power series is defined as a regular series, but it has a variable like x involved in it. A power series about center x equal to 0 is a series of the form summation of cn x to power n, which is c sub 0 plus c sub 1x plus c sub 2x squared and so on. What are we going to do? We're just basically plug in values for n and evaluate each term. So when n is equal to 0, you get c sub 0 x to power 0. When n is equal to 1, you get c sub 1 x to power 1. When n is equal to 2, you get c sub 2 x squared. And then you're adding all of these terms together one by one. Now I expect you to ask, what if we change the center? If the center is not 0, like a number like a, the series can be defined as the form of cn x minus a to power n. With the same argument, we plug in different values for our n. So when n is equal to 0, you get c sub 0 x minus a to power 0. When n is equal to 1, you get c sub 1 x minus a to power 1. When n is equal to 2, you get c sub 2 x minus a to power 2. Then you add all of these terms together and you get your power series centered at a. a is called the center and the coefficients c sub 0, c sub 1, c sub 2, and so on. They are all constants. So as you can see, you're taking a bunch of polynomials and add them together. We have a nice theorem here. For a given power series, summation cn x minus a to power n, there are only three possibilities. One of them is the series converges only when x is equal to a. It means that you get zero terms. The second possibility is when the series converges for all x values. The third possibility, there is a positive number like r such that the series converges if the absolute value of x minus a or the distance between x and a is less than r. And at any other point, it's going to be a divergent series. But how do we test the power series for convergence? Convergence of a power series can be determined by using the ratio test that you're all familiar with. Suppose cn is not zero, and the limit of absolute value of cn plus one times x minus a to power n plus one over cn times x minus a to power n as n goes to infinity can be written as, simplified as, the absolute value of x minus a times the limit of cn plus 1 over cn as n goes to infinity, and it is equal to a value like L. Well, if L is less than 1, then the series converges absolutely. And if a L is more than 1, the series diverges. And when L is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. It means that we have to do other tests. The ratio test is always inconclusive at endpoints a plus minus r as well. So if you have your L and L is less than 1, for sure you can say that a hey, series converges absolutely. Let's take a look at one familiar example, a geometric series. A geometric series is defined as the summation of x to power n when you list these terms one by one and add them together, it is just 1 plus x plus x squared plus the rest of the terms x to the n. Let us apply the ratio test here.
So a ratio test says we have the limit of the absolute value of cn plus 1 times x minus a to power n plus 1 divided by cn x to x plus. Let me edit this. x minus a to power n as n goes to infinity. If this is equal to L and L is less than 1, then the series converges absolutely. Okay, let us simplify this. We get the limit of absolute value. But Cn x to power n is just x to the n. So you have x to power n plus 1 divided by x to the n as n goes to infinity, which in turns can be written as, let me move this guy down here, as the limit of absolute value of x to the n times x divided by x to the n as n goes to infinity. So you can cancel out x to the n and x to the n. This is the limit of absolute value of x as n goes to infinity, but there is no n anymore. So you end up with absolute value of x. If this is less than 1, then the series converges absolutely. But this is what we know from before. Why is that? Remember, if you had a geometric series, for a geometric series, a r to power n minus 1, and start from 1 to infinity, if absolute value of r was less than 1, you could say that, hey, this geometric series converges to a, divided by 1 minus r. So this series, as long as absolute value of x is less than 1, converges to 1, divided by 1 minus x. We can take a look at some of the terms and the graph as well. For example, let me erase the ratio test here. We need a little bit of more space. So the very first term is 1. This is your very first term, which is a flat line here. This is one approximation for this power series. If you take the first two terms, 1 plus x, you get a line approximating this summation. Okay, we're getting closer and closer. What if I take the first three terms? I get 1 plus x plus x squared, which is a quadratic term. In this quadratic expression, you have a better approximation of 1 over 1 minus x. They are getting closer and closer. And finally, if you take the first four terms, five terms, six terms, seven terms, eight terms, you see that, well, the addition of the first nine terms, one plus x plus x squared plus x to the third plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth plus x to the sixth plus x to the seventh plus x to the eighth is a graph that is very close to what we are looking for. We know that this geometric series, as long as absolute value of x is less than one, is converging to one over one minus x. But the graph of 1 over 1 minus x, as you can see, behave like this. 
So if you add more terms, add more polynomials together, you see you have a better approximation for this power series, which in this case is a geometric series.